So I've decided to make a change. I'm going to change from my intermediate line to this, my floating fly line. But before I get started, I'm going to need to attach a leader. Now there are two main types of leader. You've got this, the knotless tapered variety. Now that's 20 pound line, real thick stuff up at that end. But then it tapers all the way down to that. Now that's just five pound line. And these are great for beginners because it's just so easy to attach. I'm going to show you how to do that. There's your floating fly line. It's got a loop on the end. And all we do is pass the thick loop through the thin loop of the leader and then take the thin line, put it back like that through the thick loop. Pull it all the way through. All the way, here we go. And then the two loops just pull down together and that's it, it's ready to go. All I've got to do is tie the fly on and I'm ready to fish. It's a really, really easy way of setting up a leader. But there's a little bit of a drawback with these. They're actually quite expensive. And the other thing is, is that each time you cut, you're actually getting thicker and thicker line. So as an alternative, you might want to get yourself some of this. These are just spools of line. I've got some six pounds, some eight pound, and some 10 there. And you can actually, by putting lengths of that together, just using little knots, you can create that tapering effect. No trout angler should ever go fishing without buzzer pupa. They are so important. And actual fact, there's a whole life cycle that you can follow. I've got them right here. What we've got, first of all, is this thing. It's called a bloodworm. It lives right down on the bottom of lakes, in sort of silt. And it's a really good little flyer to use around sort of winter time and when it's really cold. Now eventually, that bloodworm changes. It changes into this. This is the buzzer pupa. Basically, what that is, is a fly it's made itself a case and it swims up to the surface, ready to hatch out into this thing. Now this is basically the adult buzzer. It's a dry fly. So with this whole buzzer pupa life cycle, you're covering top, middle and bottom and it represents the final stage of this whole life cycle that is so important to the trout and also important to you as the fly fisher. I've tied on my buzzer and I'm ready to fish. I'm going to fish this buzzer using a really interesting tactic. It's called indicator fishing. Now indicators come in lots of shapes and sizes and different varieties. You get some that are like a dough, you just roll onto the line. You get others that are yarn that you can knot into the line. Or you get these. Now these are the simplest form. They're just a little stick on indicator. They're on a backing paper. You pull them off like this and then it's dead simple. Find your leader. Think about where your fly is. Now my fly right there knotted on that little buzzer pupa I'm going to set it around about two, two and a half feet down. Now what I mean by that is simple. If I get that indicator, just wrap it around the leader here, stick it on. What's going to happen is when I cast that out, my fly right there, that's going to settle kind of two and a half feet down or so, right underneath the indicator. Now straight away, a lot of people are going to look at it and think, well, it's a float. I don't mind admitting it is a float. That's all it does. It sits that fly at a given depth when the fish takes, this zooms underneath, we strike, and you've got your fish. It's a really good way of presenting a buzzer. Yes! There we are, fish on! Ha <laughs> ha! Now with the indicator, what's fantastic about this is that you don't have to do a huge amount. It's still a valid fishing tactic. You've still got to be able to cast it out there. But in essence, you've got a little float and then you fish your fly underneath it. Now in this case, I've changed. I had a buzzer on, but I've actually now gone to what we call an egg. This is a little bright fly which in this kind of murky water, the fish are picking out. We chuck it out there, we leave it, and it's kind of a good law of averages fly and technique because as the fish swim backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, they eventually happen upon it, they see it, if they like the look of it, they take it. And all I saw there was the indicator it just slid away, just like a float, and I just lifted it and I've hit my fish. Now you've got to be careful not to bully fish. Now here we've got this weed, so I've got to keep tension on him. If I bullet, it, if I really try and get him in the net, if I'm overzealous, I don't exercise some patience, I'm going to lose him at the most crucial point. 
And remember, it's really important, get that net nice and deep and get the fish really ready. I've played him as, as hard as I can, but being careful, I've made sure that I haven't bullied him too much. You can see the fly right in the corner of his mouth, so I've got to be careful. He's ready for the net, and there we are, a lovely southward rainbow. And then there's no other word to describe that fish. Again, it's fantastic. It's got this great big tail. Look at that. The beautiful pink down the side, really good stripes. They're solid fish. They fight really well. And, you know, a lot of people sort of say, oh, small waters, the fish don't scrap, and it's too easy, and so on. But remember what they are. Small waters are a brilliant way of cutting your teeth, of getting to grips with fishing, of learning some new techniques, trying things out. And let's face it, no angler in their right mind isn't going to want to catch a fish like that. So the fish I just caught was on this weird little critter. It's called an egg. It's kind of designed to look like trout roe or salmon roe. At least that's how it was designed to be fished abroad. But over here we use it like a little attractor. You can pull it through fish or you can fish it like I just did with this indicator. And basically all that happened there was that the fish came along, took the egg, pulled that float underneath, or my indicator as we call it, and I struck and hooked my fish. So one of my favourite ways to go fly fishing is with this. Now this is a dry fly. It's a really traditional way of going fly fishing. What we're going to be doing is sticking this. This is a daddy long legs. I've seen a few sort of flying around today. Out on top of the water there. Trout have been feeding on them. And the idea of this, it just sits on the surface. It's a really great fun way of fishing. The fish actually come up and take it. And you're going to see them take it. When that fish comes up and takes the fly off the surface, you just strike and you've got your fish on. But there's one thing with a dry fly, although it's got all these sort of bits of fur and feather to help it sit on the surface, if you just keep chucking them out there, they drown eventually. So I've got this stuff. Now it's got a weird name, it's called Gurk's Gink. You can get all sorts of other floatants, but this is one of my favourites. It's just like a gel, get a little bit out, stick it onto my finger like that, and then you melt that on your finger first. Now that's really important. Most people um, that I come across, a lot of them, they'll actually stick the the gel straight onto the fly, and that will mat it down and stop it sitting on the surface. In fact, it'll help it sink rather than keep it up there. But then also, now that that's ready to sit on the surface, we've got to think about the leader. If you chuck that leader out there, connected to the fly, without degreasing it, it will sit on the surface. And when the fish come up to take the fly, they're going to think, ah, don't want that. So what we do is use a bit of this paste. In my other pocket here, these waistcoats are really handy for this sort of thing. I got some of this stuff. It's like a kind of a, a paste that you can buy. You might find that it's called leader sink, something like that. You can make it yourself if you like. I just buy it. You just get a bit like this, get it nice and wet. I've dunked that in the water earlier on. And then we just smear that all down the leader like this. And that'll help the leader sit below the surface. And when our fish come up to take the fly, they won't know that it's not the real thing. A lot of people think that when you fish with a dry fly, you've actually got to move it. You've got to make the fish come to the fly and follow it and take it. Well, in actual fact, that'll basically mean it'll probably go below the surface or be maybe waking on the surface. And yeah, it will catch fish at times. But in actual fact, dry fly, the way to do it is to throw it out there, get it all straight, get that leader nicely sunk. If you lose some of that leader sink, some of that putty, it'll be sat below the surface. The fish then will come up. It won't see your leader. It'll just see the dry, the silhouette of it come up, take it, and then we strike. So actually, it's really lazy fishing. Well, that hasn't worked. I've tried the dry fly for quite a while now. There were fish on the surface. They were definitely coming up, and I saw a few daddy long legs. But I definitely think that now, the fish have actually dropped down deeper. And so for that reason, I'm going to follow them. I'm going to try a lure again. Yes! Ha <laughs> ha! At last! <laughs> At last! I've been after one of these big fish all day long. Look at that. Five weight rod. And that fish is absolutely going for it. Wow, we are going to have some scrap on here. He's going for the weed, going for the weed. There's nothing you can do but just hold on. 
and take your time. Try and relax, enjoy it as much as you can. Come on, fish. Oh, that fish is seriously going for it. I'm actually running down the bank with it at the moment. I don't know who's in control here, me or the fish. I think the fish definitely, just at the moment. It's gone into that weed. It's right up on the surface now. Nice, nice fish. Really nice fish. Now this is the thing with a light rod, these big fish give you some go, but they keep coming up, they grab the fly, I've missed them, everything. I can't really see them in the murky water. And finally this one, I got it just right and he's absolutely nailed it. This is why I trout fish. It's just these moments where you almost think you got the fish, but you haven't quite. That little bit of weed up there, look, look, here he comes, here he comes. No, he's over the net and got again. Come on. It's almost as big as a carp, that. Uh, we've got him, yes! Woohoo! So look at that. You've got to be looking at about seven or eight pounds of prime small water rainbow there. And that's a big fish. We aren't always come out for big fish, but I'm very, very happy to have caught that. And I've had a great day. I've tried some different techniques. I've learnt a few things. And that's the great thing about these small waters. They're just brilliant to cut your teeth. Look at it. What a fantastic fish. Beautiful. Fantastic scales. Massive tail. And that's why I got such a good fight out of it. And that really is a great way to end my day out on a small water. You can see him just kicking away and there he goes. Brilliant stuff. I'm so chuffed with that.